Hello and welcome to the first lecture of an introduction to Counter Engineering. Let me state plainly the first goal of this course, to encourage you to build almost impossible machines. Now if the machine goes against the second law of thermodynamics, don't bother. Everything else is fair game. Standard engineering is a field of building almost possible machines. They're not completely known, of course. If you had a full specification, you wouldn't need an engineer. But almost impossible machines? In the words of Richard Hamming, engineering is something you shouldn't be doing unless you know what you're doing. So for that reason, standard engineering proceeds from standard science. Standard science operates empirically. We measure the success of the theory as the agreement between it and the data, the results of our experiments. The theories that the data lines up with are used by engineers to build particular machines dictated by those theories. These machines enable further experiments that confirm that theory, and so on and so forth. Now, Paul Feyerabend has a different conception of science. He advises we take an anything-goes approach. As an example, Feyerabend invites us to consider counter-rules which oppose standard science. The counter-rule for empiricism advises us to introduce and elaborate hypotheses which are inconsistent with well-established theories and or well-established facts. It advises us to proceed counter-inductively. Counter-engineering proceeds from counter-inductive science. Counter-engineers do not constrain our domain to the most popular theories. We sift through the blueprints of madmen and alchemists. We are Newton reading hermetic texts. We give religion a role in our designs. Our machines are dreams and visions. These machines may take multiple generations to build, a glacial progression from almost impossible to that complete specification. But still, we work at these, building these machines all the same. Now the second goal of this course is to get you to build great machines. It's one thing to choose an almost impossible vision, but it's quite another thing to choose a great one. Our machines should be virtuous. They should enable the flourishing of mankind. Those that seek to accelerate into the void should look elsewhere to look for work. We seek structures that persist over time and grow. In order to make something that lasts a hundred years, there's no other way to do it. You must create something that is alive. When one grabs structure and shakes it, adds more and more energy to it, that structure just dissipates into nothingness. We must be careful in how we apply our labor to ensure return. In order to teach this course, I will have to talk about my own vision. The intent with sharing this is not really to bring you over to my side. Uh, but, of course, you are welcome if this is an honest expression of your own will. The reason I'm talking about my experience is that it's what I know and how I came to be here. If I try and generalize it, make it abstract, the words will sound hollow. So, my dream is of the children of men. Not quite human children, something more. Artificial in some way. Engineered. Intelligent, yes, but not but not intelligence without form. Intelligence always needs a home, a body. The body is not a limit on the intelligence itself, it's the constraint that enables it to arise within. Contrary to common belief, it is not the intelligence we need to engineer, it is the body. And, you know, right now we can't build greater machines than the human body. Great machines, yes, but the human body is still orders of magnitudes better designed than anything humans can make. Machinery is so efficient, it lives. We don't need to invent these machines, reinvent these machines. Instead, we can nudge them. Tiny nudges add up to a lot in stochastic systems. Careful, deliberate control of such an extremely high dimensional system means careful, deliberate adjustments of morphology. In this new human body, then, artificial intelligence. Pretty crazy, huh? Counter-engineering is not a profession for the faint of heart. These dreams tend to creep up on you. They start simply. In my case, it was an interest in Carl Frisson's work on active engineering. This was hailed as a groundbreaking work in understanding cognition. So I took, took a look at it. I started reading. And I didn't understand it one bit. When you run across a genius in the present, producing novel work that you don't understand. As someone who considers themselves intelligent, this can be fairly heartbreaking. Um, and
And when you run into that, as I hope you do, there are two possible responses. The first is to say, I'm just not smart enough for this. Or if you're arrogant, you say, I don't understand this, so this guy is crazy or wrong. To you give up. To build great machines, you must not give up. You must take the second path, non-servile humility. You must recognize your failures and solve them with work and labor. You must read the papers the work references, watch lectures on the subject, and spend time coming to your own conclusions. Now, as a counter-engineer, you must come across a most unfortunate conclusion. Your vision will almost certainly not be completed in your lifetime. It's looking good for your vision, go into standard engineering instead. I expect this realization of what appears to be futility to be accompanied by a great deal of despair. This thing that you're willing to devote your life to will almost surely not show up. If that's true, how can what you do really matter? Well, the only antidote is faith. Faith that you are enabling something greater, that what you do matters after you die. No amount of rationality will lead you to this, to faith. No empirical, repeatable, fossilized tests can ever be made of what you have faith in. Counterengineering is not anti-rational, it just understands that there is a time and a place for rationality. Standard engineering proceeds rationally, forward in time. Counterengineering proceeds counterfactually, backward in time. Perhaps you are thinking this is a bit much. Faith, visions, just want to engineer for God's sake. Well, I can tell you the struggle is worth it. When I first started down this path, it was a decade ago, it was a bit of a dark time in the world. In the middle of the Trump era, what was true and what was false was uncertain. What the future held was clouded and unsure. One couldn't rely on the veracity of what was said to them, as speaking what one truly believed was discouraged. People were too terrified to move to be themselves. For me, I had faith. I believed my labor would amount to something, and that this was the perfect time to build some light into the world. And now I'm here, speaking to you. I did build something, and it was good. Now it's your turn. The next lecture is August 3rd. See you then.